It's our pleasure today to host Bruce Wren, a commercial banker for Ameris Bank in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, Mr. Wren graduated from PC in 1989, um, and then he moved on to go into the business world. And we're here to hear some things from him, some, some experience, some, some life lessons. So I'll just, uh, would you like to say hello? Hello, thank you for having me, Tucker. Yes, sir, of course. Um, thank you for being here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hop into a few of the questions. Um, number one, I'll say, tell us a bit about your academic and professional background. Okay, so um, I graduated from Presbyterian College in 1989, and so I graduated with a double major uh, business administration and history and uh, went into the business world. Um, I spent a year working for a office equipment company in Myrtle Beach um, and then moved into banking about a year after that. Uh, I've worked in the banking industry for 30 years now. Um, and so uh, the first five years uh, were uh, in what we call retail banking, uh, which is really branch banking, consumer banking. And then the last 25 years I've worked uh, in commercial banking, um, working with businesses, um, all different sizes, you know, sales, um, half million dollars up to $30 million uh, in revenue each year. Um, and I guess after being in the uh, banking world for about 10 years, um, I uh, went uh, back to pursue my uh, MBA uh, through uh, University of South Carolina's PMBA program, which is kind of their night and uh, weekend program, uh, and completed that in um, 2000. Really? I didn't, I didn't know that at all. I didn't know you went back yeah. to school. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep. Sure did. All right. Um, great answer. All right. So next question, what does your company do and what is your role or regular responsibilities like day to day responsibilities? If you're so Maris Bank is a full, full service commercial bank. Um, uh, and then we also uh, have consumer services as well. I work on the commercial side. So my role is to uh, work with a portfolio of clients uh, with both their business deposit uh, and business lending needs, um, as well as working with the business owners uh, with their personal banking needs. So um, part of my role is to also expand uh, that portfolio. Uh, and so, um, so it's really kind of a relationship role as well as a sales and growth role. Uh, and so what we do is, is really just sit down with our clients, um, try to really understand, um, their business, what their, uh, how they operate and, you know, how our banking products can assist them, uh, on the deposit side, um, you know, we, we offer, you know, the checking account, uh, but it's, it's really evolved to much more than that. Um, commercial clients today want uh, easy access to make payments, um, you know, either through self-initiated wires or automated clearing house. They also want to be able um, to receive payments from their clients as quickly as they can uh, so that that money can go in their account for cash flow purposes. And then on the lending side, uh, we assist with business expansion, uh, equipment loans, working capital, lines of credit. Um, and then this year, we were very heavily involved uh, in the Paycheck uh, Protection Program. Uh, through the SBA, uh, our bank, we closed as a bank about 10,000 uh, SBA loans 
yeah, uh, which I kept remember. businesses afloat. Uh, yeah, back in the spring. Yeah, I remember um, you talking about. So, yeah, we were able to to help a lot of people uh, and get money uh, to them so that they could retain their employees. And so, right now, we have moved into uh, the last phase um, for those clients, and that. Um, they are now working through our portal uh, to request um, the forgiveness um, component of those loans. And so we are reviewing those applications and then submitting the, them to, uh, to the SBA. So it's been kind of a different year uh, for us. Uh, we did 10 years worth of SBA loans in about a 90 day period. Um, uh, and then, uh, so we've done that as well as uh, our uh, traditional day-to-day -day duties as well. So, uh, but it's been a it's, it's been a challenging year, but um, but it's been real rewarding as well. Yeah, I'm sure. I, one of my I actually was gonna ask my next question: How did Corona like really affect you? How did the coronavirus affect you and your company? Well, uh, quite a bit actually. So. Um, you know, the main thing is we, we want to make sure that our employees are, are safe, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, we have to meet the needs of the client. So um, we still have a number uh, of employees that are working remotely. Um, we did close the inside of our branches uh, really from about March until August, uh, and we're really working just drive through only, uh, and then by appointment for the inside. Um, we have reopened the branches um, and are have installed some things to help with social distance, distancing, such as plexiglass at the teller windows, right. uh, as well as uh, on the desk in our offices. Um, so, uh, it, it did impact us quite a bit. Of course, I've already mentioned the, the, the PPP role that we played right. right now. Um, from a client standpoint, I mean, we have a lot of clients that are still trying to, um, get their cash flow back to where it needs to be. So in a lot of cases on the commercial side, uh, we did payment deferrals. Um, 90 day payment deferrals to where uh, we did not require them uh, to make their principal and interest payments for those months, uh, which really helped keep them afloat. Sure. Um, and I'm sure and that so can... we are still doing some of that as well as uh, setting people up just on interest only payments. So, um, you know, we, we are trying to look ahead um, to 2021 and hopefully by the end of the first quarter, um, maybe things will be back, at least we hope, um, for the economy to where we can get these uh, folks back on, um, on P&I payments because uh, that impacts our cash flow um, when we have to defer. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're just trying to, to help our clients and stay afloat the best we can, um, but at the same time, um, make sure that uh, we're doing all of our uh, risk analysis from a bank's uh, standpoint to make for make sure that the commercial portfolio um, that all the boxes are checked for um, our uh, external regulators. I got you. It sounds like you've really done a lot to to help. Um, your clients and kind of keep them on their feet, especially during the challenging times. Um, that leads me to my next question. What do you, what is your favorite thing about your job? Just coming to work every day and working with a, a group of people that um, really pull together. Um, we've got a good group um, here in Columbia. Um, with our commercial team and really um, bank why um, you know we're a uh, southeast regional size bank so face-to-face -face, uh, relationships with our clients are, are very important 
right. um, since since we're not as, as large as, as some of the uh, bigger banks, um, we we have a community banking approach, uh, meaning that so when when a, a client has a problem, um, you know they're going to call me. Um, I'm kind of the the quarterback of their relationship, and so um, th that's really our competitive advantage is is that personal client touch. Is that uh, the face to face? I got you. Um, all right. What life lessons or advice do you have for current students who may want to pursue this field as a career? So say a, a student is thinking so, about going into the bank you know, really, business. Yeah. So, you know, the banking business, there's a lot of different um, areas in, in banking um, that are available for students that are, that are thinking about, uh, a career um, in the banking industry. Um, so, you know, there's the commercial side, there's the consumer side, um, there's mortgage, uh, marketing. Um, uh, we even, even have wealth management as well. So there's a lot of different things you can get into, uh, a lot of different areas um, that are going to provide challenges. I, I would say that you know, for students that are, are coming out um, and are looking at the banking world or really anything in the business world is to um, ha have self-confidence uh, and be self-motivated. Um, you know, I, th I think that that's really what we want to see when we have uh, new hires coming in to our shop um, that, um, you know, they're not afraid to hit the ground running, um, and, and, and really, you know, take on, uh, a role immediately. Um, you know, of course we, you know, we offer training, um, uh, but, um, you know, that's, that's really the biggest thing is, is to, you know, have the confidence to really come in and, um, uh, and, and attack the job. Right. That makes sense. Um, cause I mean, if, if a student just kind of shows up and expects to get taught everything right immediately, no, no motivation, that's probably a red flag, I assume. Yeah, I think ones that we see that, um, are able to, I guess, make an impact, um, uh, immediately, you know, are, are, are new hires that, you know, are not only, uh, doing the work that's assigned to them, but, you know, also offer um, new ideas. Um, and it may be from, um, you know, a technology standpoint, you know, with some type of, um, you know, analysis type worksheet uh, that they can introduce to help with our risk management as we're underwriting loans. Um, you know, I guess, I guess uh, really the thing is, is that, you know, if, if they have some downtime, just think of innovative ways to try to help the company. Yeah. Right. I mean, innovation is the, the key to moving forward, the key to progress. So, um, I'll go into my, my next question then, which is, uh, PC's motto is dumb, vivid, and servimus, which is, or while we live, we serve. In what ways are you or your company involved in service, like outside of work days, outside of the week? Your normal. Right. Hours? Okay. So um, we just finished up our big company wide initiative um, that we do through throughout our markets in in Georgia, in Florida, and South Carolina. And so um, we do a big food drive um, and really conduct that um, through the branches. Um, and these food drives really get a lot of momentum. Um, you know, you'll go in our branches and, um, you can hardly walk cause there's just, um, you know, so much, uh, dry good, um, and non-perishable type foods. And then we will usually donate those to a local food bank. Um, and so, um, here in Columbia, we, uh, we work with one of the local churches, um, and so 
we were able uh, really to, to fill up um, their entire area um, that they store their food. So we do that. Um, and then also um, we do some Habitat for Humanity projects throughout the footprint. Um, and so um, those are exciting. And then personally, um, I work through our church uh, with the Bradley Elementary Lunch Buddies program. Um, unfortunately, right now, that's a, a little bit on hold with uh, just kind of what's going on with, with, with students and, and being able to be uh, in the classroom. But that's something that I've really enjoyed. I've done that for four years um, and so it, it really enjoyed I've heard about my lunch buddies. Yeah, I've heard about the, the Bradley Lunch Buddies thing uh, because obviously I've, I've gone to church a couple of times. Um, but what exactly do you do with them? Do you just go eat with them just like at their cafeteria or do you like bring them lunch? So, so we meet, yeah, we meet, um, twice a month. Um, and so we will sit down with them at the beginning of their lunch period in the lunchroom and, you know, just spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes just kind of catching up with what's going on with them. Uh, making sure that, um, that they're, in the right, I guess, uh, frame of mind, you know, and, and how they're approaching their classes, um, you know, talk sports if they want to talk some sports. And, right. and then uh, we will go to an assigned area in the school, it's, if it's the library or a, a room they kind of have dedicated for lunch buddies. And you sit down and they will have um, books, that their teacher has uh, assigned to them for reading. Uh, and so we just kind of read together. Uh, and then uh, we will ask just kind of some comprehensive questions at the end, just to try to help with their understanding of what they just read. So, uh, so it's really kind of a lot, it's, it's really a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's amazing to, to, to see how, uh, their reading improves, and um, we we will start with uh, a lunch buddy assignment. Uh, it's a third grader, and they will we will stay with that lunch buddy through third grade, fourth grade, and then fifth grade. Uh, so right now I'm on my uh, second lunch buddy, okay. um, and just finished the third grade and is now in the fourth grade. That sounds that sounds awesome. I'm sure it's very fulfilling to like see their their progress and their improvement for sure. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, it's a great group of kids over at Bradley Elementary School. Yes, sir. Uh, unfortunately, we are past 15 minutes now, so that's the end of our interview. Thank you for coming and talking to me and uh, talking to the rest of my class because they are going to see this, unfortunately. <laughs> and by unfortunately, I mean very fortunately. Um, it was a great interview. I'm sorry to take up your time. Have a good day at work. No, my pleasure.